Hello, Tab Nation. I'm Tom, and are you part of the nation? If not, hit that subscribe button because every week we're coming out with new videos. Now, this video is going to be about Auto Hockey version 2. A lot of questions coming up with the beta at the time of the filming, so let's hope we can answer some of those questions. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, so as filming this video, beta is out for version 2 of Auto Hockeys. There's a lot of questions coming out, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to get Auto Hockeys version 2, answer some questions, and then we're going to do some sample code that will kind of introduce you to version 2, kind of show you some of the changes. I will be doing some other videos, but I'm not going to dive too deep into version 2, just because honestly, I have no use for it yet, um, so I'm not sure how many people are really going to be making that switch. So, to start off, to get version 2, at the moment of filming this video, there is no installer. Uh, once one comes out, I'll actually link how to install version 1. It's going to be the exact same thing. If not, I'll do another video, but I'll put that in the description below. So, all you got to really do is Google Auto Hockey version 2 or v2 as i did here and it's going to take you to their main website which this i'll also link in the description below down here you're looking for current beta release so you're going to click that you're going to get this download uh, i already downloaded it so i'm going to push cancel and where is that here's that so you're going to unzip this and it's going to come with a few uh, files I deleted the two uh, files, but you want to keep these. This is AutoHotKey uh, 32 and AutoHotKey 64. So it depends what you really want to use. I know most people are going to probably be using 32. So I'll be doing that in this video too. Now, a few things that people always are asking about version 2 is, if I get version 2, do all my version 1 scripts break and stop working? The answer is no. You can install version 1 and 2 on your computer at the same time. I've ran version 1 scripts and version 2 scripts at the same time with no issues at all. The only thing is that obviously version 1 scripts need to run with version 1 auto hotkeys and version 2 scripts need to run with version 2 auto hotkeys. There is no backwards compatibility, so just keep that in mind when you're trying to launch a script. Now, right now, I find the easiest way uh, for me is since most of my scripts are in version 1, I just have that .ahk extension default to version 1. If I want to launch a version 2 script, I actually find it very easy to just grab your script, drag it over top of, you know, the executable, and that will just auto-launch it right away. So... That's by far the easiest way I find at the moment to keep version 1 and 2 on your uh, computer. So, yeah, let's uh, take a look at some of the code here. So one thing I'm doing at the moment, and I plan to do this for the future, is anytime I write a version 2 script, my first line, I'm putting a commented out uh, comment here, just saying AHK version 2, just so it reminds me. I'm also, when I save the file, I'm including that v2 in there, just so I can quickly look at that script and go, well, this is obviously a version 2 script. I think that's something that we should all practice from now on, especially if you plan to share your script at some point. It's going to help the other person, because they'll see your script and be like, okay, this is version 2, I need to know that. Uh, if it doesn't have this comment at all, it's just blank. I just assume automatically it's a version 1 script. So I think that's a good practice we should all start doing is making sure we put that as version 2 in that first line of code. So there's a lot of changes um, that have happened. I'll do more videos. This is just kind of your first script kind of thing, introduction. But one thing that you got to remember is that hotkeys now, everything's basically a function now. There's really no commands uh, individually anymore. So right here I have F1. I do have to put that in brackets now. You know, before in version 1, I could do something like this and just put a return. And that was perfectly acceptable. This will throw an error. 
So we want to make sure that we're enclosing our hotkeys now into the brackets. Now doing this also gets rid of the need for a return down here. So we have no purpose for a return right here. It's going to hit that bracket and this is basically acting as a return now, which is kind of nice. I like that uh, kind of. It's a little weird, so we'll see how I like it in the long run. Um, so our first key here for hotkeys, and that's basically for people who are just coming in watching, that's how we're going to trigger our code. I'm going to press F1, and you just put these little dots here. Make sure you put two of them. And that's just saying every time I push, you know, whatever key is assigned here, every time I press A, you know, do my code, that kind of thing. So the first thing uh, we're doing is a variable. So I just named it variable test or var test. Now you do now have to put the dots here with an equal sign and you do need to enclose them in quotation marks. Now that's very different from the first one as in the first one, something like this was perfectly acceptable. This will no longer work. You do need to put the little dots there and make sure you're putting quotations there. If you do not put these quotations here, it thinks that this is a variable versus a string. So it's almost like you're trying to assign two variables to a single variable, which if you have a need for, you can definitely do. But if you wanted to know that it's a string, just throw those quotation marks in there. Next, we're going to have a message box, which is just like a system message that pops up. This is uh, pretty simplified now. I actually kind of like it this way better. It's very simple, just message box, msg box, and then my variable that I'm calling upon. Uh, in the older version, you had to put, you know, percent signs in there. You no longer have to do that because it automatically assumes that you're doing a variable unless you put quotations, in which case then this message box would actually say variable test versus hello world. So if you're doing a string, always make sure you're putting those quotations. But here, we're calling upon that variable, hello world. So it's very simple. That's all we need right there. Just message box, variable test. Now there is another way now that you can do it with an object. You can do result, the dots, equals, and then message box, close it in brackets, another variable test, I guess. I don't really see myself ever using this kind of way for, I can't think of a reason why I would want to, but it is an option now, so I'm sure there is some need out there, so I'm just throwing it in there. Now with the quotations here, you just got to be careful. So I'm starting out with quotation, another, I'm putting a space in there because I do want a space between my next variable, and a quotation. So it's saying, okay, this right here is part of a string. Then we're going to uh, call upon our variable here. Then we're going to do another quotation, I guess, quotation. So this variable right here is technically outside of all these quotations. So it does know that that's a variable and not a string. And just make sure you add the spacing where you need it. Uh, you know, I, I don't have to put the spacing here if I don't want to. I could put it up here if I wanted to. Because if I don't, if I forget the spacing, it would jumble the sentence into just like one giant word. And as you see, I have no return because this is kind of acting like a return. So let's go ahead and run this and uh, we'll show you F1 in action. I'm going to grab my version 2 test script here and I'm just going to drag it on top, let go, and it is running. To know if it's running, unfortunately you can't see it on my screen right now, but down in the system tray, there'll be a little like up carrot. You just click on there. And auto hotkeys is a green icon just like this. And you can right click on it to close it out. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to press F1. There we go. We got our first message box. As you see, instead of saying variable test, it's saying hello world. Let's get in it from up here. And then here's the other one. That's just a different formatting. Same thing. Yeah. That is how you do creation, a creation of a variable and a message box. So the next one uh, that a lot of people like to use, especially when it comes to like gaming and stuff, is just send commands. So once again, we're doing a hotkey here. This time I'm using F2. I'm closing it in brackets, and then I'm doing a send. Once again, in the old version, send, hello world. This would type out hello world. 
but if I do it like this, it's going to think I'm trying to call upon a variable called hello and a variable called world. So we don't want to do that. We want to close it in quotations. That way it knows it's a string. Next, uh, if we want to send, you know, keys, tab key, enter key, space key, whatever, uh, we just put in in brackets. Once again, we are putting it into quotations. Put in brackets when we're using a key that's not like a basic letter or number. Tab. And if you want, you can have it send five times versus creating five lines that say send tab, send tab, send tab. We're just going to send it five times. If you just want to send it once, that's all you do right there. It's just tab or space or enter. Um, but we'll do five just so you can see that. The next thing I want to do is I want to click right. Once again, make sure you're closing that in quotations. And that will just right click like that. So let's go ahead and we'll just uh, we'll just do it right here. I'm going to go ahead and press F2. So as you see, it sent hello world, my right menu open. And if I click out, you can see that it did tab over five times right here because I got all that space right there. It just right clicked over here because that's where my mouse location was at the moment. And yeah, there we go on that one. Next up, we're going to get a little bit fancier here. Um, this time I'm going to be using F3 as my hotkey. Once again, make sure you close it in brackets. I know that's probably going to be one of the hardest things to get used to in version 2, just because I'm not used to it. I'm sure I could like start going through doing all my code, and then at the end I completely forget to just add that last closing bracket. I can definitely see that, so it might be a good practice just when you start to just go ahead put that closing bracket and then just put a bunch of enters in here and then do your code just so you don't forget and you hit that error when it says you know it's not defined here so this is called a handler and that's when i basically want to say like go to start over that's basically a jump say jump here now so i'm doing one for uh starting over you'll see why here in a second so here i'm going to do an input box this is what I'm doing, kind of like with an object. I'm doing the variable name is going to be called age. You know, put those dots, the equal signs. Then we're going to do input box. That's like a message box where people can enter data into. And I'm asking the question, what is your age? Close it in quotations. Oh, the whole thing in brackets too. Point that out. Uh, age, that's just kind of the title. And then height, height and width of your window. If you leave this blank, it just defaults kind of to like to the system, which I think is like 500 by 600 or something. Another cool thing that uh, me and Joe actually found out when we were doing this is height and width can go in any order. It actually doesn't matter. So if I want, I can put width first. I kind of like that. That way it's less syntax to kind of remember the order of operations with something like this. So that's very helpful, I think. And so, yeah, you can do width first, height first, or just not have this at all if you don't want to. But we want to we want to adjust to look clean, so we're going to do that. So the person's going to input their data. I'm going to go ahead and actually pull that up, F3. So that's what that looks like. What is your age? The window title, age. And there's the input box, which is going to save as the variable is going to be saved. The string is going to be saved as age. Okay, cancel. So now we're going to do an if statement. And we're going to say if age result equals cancel, meaning I pressed cancel, do the stuff in this bracket, which is just going to give me a message box that says, nah, son, you need to tell me your age. So we're basically forcing the user to have to give us an answer. So then once they close out of that message box, which we can do now, cancel. There we go. I'm going to push OK. And it does that go to start over. So it goes right back to the box, does the input box all over again. So we're forcing you to give us an answer. You need to give us an answer. <laughs> now, um, if they do say put something in here, you know, I'm 150 years old. Else, meaning they didn't push cancel, they pushed whatever other button, which is just okay. We're going to give you a message box that says you entered, put in quotations age dot value now what was the value that they put in there so we're going to display that so i'm going to go ahead and push ok you entered 150. so that's just showing us 
what we entered. And you can do whatever you want with that data. Alrighty. And if you guys have any questions about any of the code on here or what you want to see coming up in version 2 stuff, definitely let me know in the comments below. My videos, uh, the way I'm thinking of formatting them now is if it just has a title with no version, assume it's a version 1 video. If it is a version 2 video, I will make sure to put that both in this description, mention in the video at the beginning that I'm doing version 2, and in the title, and I'm also going to throw in my thumbnail somewhere in there, something saying version 2. That way you should hopefully know that I'm talking about version 2 in here, these videos, and not version 1. So I think that's the format I'm going to do, make it very clear what I'm doing. Uh, the last thing I want to show you real quick is I'm going to use the hotkey here, F4 message box, closing script, put it in quotations because I you know, want it to actually display closing script, and just exit app, and all that does is manually close my, or automatically closes my script versus me manually having to right click down on the tray and do it myself. So I'm going to go ahead and press F4, closing script. Okay, my script is now officially closed. So real quick, some of my thoughts on version 2 is I know a lot of people are like freaking out and they're like, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to convert all my version 1 scripts to version 2. Don't do that. That's a waste of time. <clears throat> you know, you can run both version 1 and version 2 on your computer, have them installed, you know, as long as you're running version 1 with the version 1 executable and version 2 with the version 2 executable. The only reason I could really see that you would actually have to create all version 2 stuff is if maybe your company is forcing you to switch to version 2 only. Hopefully they don't do that because that would be a huge waste of time on your part. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there's no reason for you to go through and convert all your stuff. Now the other thing too is I honestly don't see myself using version 2 anytime soon it's going to take years and years to get adapted if it ever does you know especially now since it's still currently in beta and i honestly don't see myself needing to use version 2 unless there's some sort of function that's only in version 2 that i absolutely need uh so for the time being all right i'm gonna practice version 2 just for the heck of it just to make some videos for you guys but I'm going to be sticking for version 1 for the foreseeable future. But eventually, I know, maybe years down the line, I'll convert completely. Let me know what you guys think about version 2. If you have any other questions that I didn't mention in here, I'm definitely happy to answer those. And I'll see you guys in the next version 1 or version 2 uh, video. See you guys next time. Bye.